Proverbs. And we're going to be looking at chapter 26. We've been in chapter 26 for a while now. Um, but interestingly, the 26th chapter of the book of Proverbs has a lot to say about the fool. And, um, you know, just as some of the other chapters have to do with wisdom, pursuing wisdom, what we have here in chapter 26, and, and it's not exclusive to chapter 26 because there's other referencing to the fool in other parts of the book of Proverbs, but in chapter 26, there are observations, eight observations about the fool. What do you think of when you think of the word fool? What image comes into your mind? A uh, guy with a lot of, you know, a funny looking hat with bells, you know, like they had back in medieval days. Uh, they used to call the court jesters the court fool. Um, modern day equivalent would be a comedian. I, uh, there's, there was a guy, I don't know if he, I think he's, he's getting old now, but he was, he was around a fellow by the name of Carrot Top. And uh, he had this bright red hair that was going everywhere, and that's why, uh, that was his uh, his stage name was Carrot Top, and uh, he always kind of reminded me of that of the court jester kind of person. Some people might envision a fool as someone who's not too bright, um, someone who lacks wattage in the old light bulb, you know. Um, Someone a few cards short of a full deck or as sharp as a bread knife. Um, sometimes they're described as dumber in a box of rocks. You ever hear that? Yeah. Um, but biblically, that is not the definition. Sometimes a fool is thought of as somebody with youth and inexperience. And it is sometimes true that young people can make some foolish decisions based upon inexperience and lack of understanding. I think probably most of us, when we were young, did things that, you know, as we reflect back and we think to ourselves, boy, was that ever stupid? Was that ever? I mean, I think most of us can look back at decisions we made earlier in life when, uh, when we didn't know any better, and we know better now that we wish we had done differently. Some people don't seem to grow out of that. You ever hear the expression? Yeah, I'll, let me say the first part. Maybe you can get to the last part. There's no fool <laughs> like an old fool. Uh, no fool like an old fool. There are a lot of people who just seem to make the same mistakes over and over and over again, even into old age. The, uh, there's, let me explain this word. Um, the word hoary. H-O-A-R-Y is a word that means gray-haired, okay? It's an old word that we don't use that anymore. But someone wrote a poet, a poem years ago, and he, talk, he starts it this way, the hoary fool, the gray-haired fool, who many days has struggled with continued sorrow, renews his hope and fondly lays the desperate bet upon tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, tis noon, tis night, tis this day like all the former flies. Yet on he goes to seek delight tomorrow till tonight he dies. <laughs> In other words, he just stays the same way until, um, you know, he passes away. We might have varying ideas of what constitute a fool, but the Bible's point of view, from that point of view, which is, a, which is the point of view we all ought to have, is a fool is someone who does not consider either the person of God or the wisdom of God. The, uh, someone who doesn't consider the person of God or the word of God in their life and decision making. That is pretty much a synopsis of what it means um, to be a biblical fool. And the image of that person is all through scripture. Uh, it is summarized in Psalm 14.1, which is, The fool has said in his heart, 
There is no God. Now, this is not talking about atheism. Uh, literally, the, 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 the language, the, uh, the original says, the fool has said in his heart, no God. I don't want God. I don't want to consider God. So it's not necessarily a belief that there is no God, like in atheism. In atheism, it's just the idea that they're not going to include God. Now, here in Proverbs 26, we have several observations about a fool. And understand that, that it's not everything that the Bible says, okay? But uh, it's just what it says here in Proverbs 26. But what it says here is, is pretty all-encompassing. For instance, it begins in verse 1 of chapter 26. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. Now, that word seemly means appropriate. So, giving honor to someone who doesn't consider God or rejects God's word is inappropriate. It, like snow is out of place in summer. Uh, like rain in harvest time in the Mideast. It wouldn't be so scarce around our, in, in our area, but in the mid Mideast, it's very dry around harvest time and but even if it comes, it is out of place and unwelcome in harvest time. In harvest time, one does not want or need rain. And snow, of course, is a contradiction in summer. God says that it is out of place for fools to be honored. That is why it is often believers who, without thinking about it, perhaps honor someone who is wicked and foolish. In our society, sports figures are honored. They're uplifted. Um, I was going to say, you know, politicians, but that, they've kind of sunk pretty low. They're kind of at bottom rung now. But uh, sports figures and actors and actresses are often uh, uplifted as, as because of their talents on, in, on the screen or on the field, they are, are held in high, high esteem. Uh, I, I can remember... And it's been some years, but uh, I can remember teen girls talking among, you know, I, I eavesdrop sometimes, and because and it, it's interesting, I like, I enjoy it. So that's, that's why I do it. And, but I eavesdropped on some teenage girls, and they're talking about performers that, that they like, singers and so on. And some of them are, they live the most wicked lives. They are devoid of character. Uh, some of the sports figures that are out there, football and basketball players and people that are, that are really held in high esteem simply because they can shoot a basketball or they can run down a field and score a touchdown or, or you know, uh, they can throw a football well and, and uh, uh, they're uplifted as if they are great people. But they're really not. Not biblically, they're not. And uh, they honor people who do not deserve it's inappropriate the scripture says here because they would qualify biblically as fools I was talking many many years ago and this to give you an idea of how many years ago it was Elvis was I think still alive at that point <laughs> or maybe he had just died or something I, but it was really around that time and I was talking to this guy down in San Antonio he was a member of our church professed Christian anyway and uh Somehow, the subject of Elvis came up, and I'm not sure how it came up, but I quickly realized that I had said something, I, I had opened a can of worms when I said something negative about Elvis, because this guy had been to, uh, what's that, Graceland in Tennessee, you know, and he had, and while he was there, and by the way, when I said this, he went into this monologue that lasted about five or ten minutes how he had been to Graceland and Elvis had come down the stairs in the home while they were making a tour and he got to meet Elvis personally. And he loved Elvis's music and, um, you know, um, you, had, you had thought, because I said something negative about Elvis, that I had, it had been almost like I had taken the Lord's name in vain. It really was. Um, he just sang Elvis's praises. He was a wonderful man, and and so on. But Elvis really lived lived an ungodly life. Uh, he was.
was a womanizer, he was on drugs, and he was, lived a very, very profligate life. God says it's inappropriate to honor fools. And it's, you know, if we look later down in verse 8, it's also wasteful. And he, as he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. Now, there, in this particular verse, there are some translation difficulties associated with this passage where it says, as he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. Some translate that if you put a stone in a sling and then bind it up within the, within the sling, uh, you can't throw it and it's therefore useless. Others have said that the stone refers, it refers to a precious stone. And that if you put that precious stone in a sling, uh, you th- you're throwing something very precious away, like a diamond or a ruby. But either way you look at it, the concept of waste is there. Okay, whether you, you it's either wasted effort or wasted wasted uh, value, and um, wasting and diminishing the value of something. He says, if you honor a fool, you're wasting. You're wasting that honor. Many years ago, our children were uh, enrolled in a Christian school. uh, And quite honestly, this was a school that our kids didn't spend long in. We had uh, entered them. We shortly, we moved shortly in, excuse me, moved into an area and wanted to get our kids shortly into a school. And so... We thought we had done our homework on it, and it really was kind of kind of a disappointment. Um, like most schools, uh, at the end of the year, they gave out uh, honors. They had like an honors assembly, and they had one honor called the Christian Character Award. And um, this award was supposed to be given the student who most exemplified leadership and Christ-like character. Um, when they called out the name of the teen young man, I was shocked. When they called his name, he was going to receive the Christian Character Award. I was stunned. I had witnessed this young man display on several occasions carnality of the worst sort on the soccer field. And I'm talking about uh, essentially yelling at refs. He should have been thrown out of the game. And uh, they tolerate, I mean, this young man was insolent. He was rebellious. He was smart-mouthed. He had a bad reputation among the other students. Everyone that knew him was shocked. He was shocked. He, He was. He knew he didn't deserve that. And when we inquired later, I, I asked somebody, what, were, what was the administration thinking? Uh, and here was the reasoning that I was giving, given. The reasoning was that for many years, the Christian Character Award had gone only to girls. They had not given it to a guy in a long time, and so they wanted to give it to a guy, and so they chose him. What did they do there? They not only made the Christian Character Award meaningless, they had given honor to a fool and wasted the meaning. They wasted that award. They had demeaned it. They had devalued it for a really poor reason. It is improper, God says, to honor a fool. It's wasteful. It is inappropriate. And then there's a caution in verse 4. And that is to have good judgment in interacting with a fool. Now, verses 4 and 5 almost seem like the Bible is contradicting itself. Let's let's follow along as I read. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So you've got two verses that seem to say the opposite of one another. But what he's talking about here is what Pastor Isaac was talking on Sunday, is context. The context of what is being said. 
Answer not a fool, verse 4, according to his folly, lest thou be like unto him. There are, there are some believers that when some foolish person takes digs at them or gets mouthy with them, that they dig back and they get mouthy back. When a school a fool scoffs, they scoff at the fool. When the fool ridicules them, they ridicule them back. The fool wants to argue and accuse, and so they argue and accuse back. The fool points fingers or a finger, and that there are some believers who would do the same back. The fool cusses them, so they cuss back. I know of professed believers who have gotten red-faced mad and shouting at somebody who's been a fool. They are playing the fool while trying to deal with fools. And God says that when you act like that, you are just like them. When you respond the way they act, it makes you like them. So don't answer a fool according to his folly. The rules that he lives his, his life by and, and infuriates others with do not play by his rules. But on the contrary, instead of uh, reacting, responding in kind, respond. And someone might say, respond kindly. Verse 5, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. The idea being expressed here is, don't respond the way he acts, but respond so that he will not go away confirmed in his foolishness, that his foolishness is unaddressed. We, we don't want to allow such people to influence in a, in a negative way by drawing us into useless arguments or under, uh, other unprofitable discussion or behavior. So we must warn them, however, that the path they're choosing can end only in the judgment of God. And we counsel them wisely. Believers cannot sit back and not say anything, and the reason is given in verse 5, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Now I understand that we are, when we're in a, in a discussion with somebody that, you know, they're spouting off either dumb or wicked things, um, sometimes we don't want to say anything because we wonder if it might be the wrong thing. I don't know about you, but one of my greatest fears is that some TV station is going to stick a camera in my face and with a microphone and ask me my, my opinion. Um, there was a preacher uh, in the Indianapolis area, I think, that something had happened in his church that he really didn't know a thing about. Well, somehow the news media got it and met him as he was going into his office in the morning. And... I, I remember seeing him on, on television thinking to myself, if that's not a deer in the headlights look, I don't know what one looks like. I mean, he was totally blindsided. Eyes open. You know. <laughs> Sometimes we're so concerned that we're going to say the wrong thing or that we'll sound stupid or that we'll, you know, that we'll stumble in our words. We end up saying nothing. And the end result is that the fool thinks he's right and is never confronted one way or the other, or he thinks that, well, people must agree with me. And he walks away wise in his own conceit. Let me tell you something. It really doesn't matter if you do not articulate something eloquently. There is a chance that you might come out of it looking foolish or maybe being embarrassed. There is that chance. I'm not going to tell you that, that it doesn't exist. But that's life. We get so nervous about what someone might think that someone might be quicker on the draw than us. And they might be somebody who is faster mentally than we are. They, they might think quicker in their feet than you do. But that doesn't mean that what you might have to say might not be a valid point and needs to be said, if for no other reason than to let that individual know that you do not agree with him, that, that he is, he's not got everybody thinking 
uh, the way he thinks. We think while we might do more harm than good, but we ensure that we can do no good by remaining silent. God says that when a fool spouts off his foolishness, do not respond in kind, but you need to kindly respond. And that is how to interact with a fool. Well, listen, I thought I'd be further along than I am. <laughs> the impropriety of honoring a fool. It's not appropriate. Watch who your heroes are. Um, you know, I'm not trying to cause family problems, but if your grandkids start talking about some sports figure or actor or actress, it might be a good thing to point out. You know, that person, you know, was just arrested for drugs or that person was, you know, they were arrested for domestic assault, which is true of a lot of athletes, by the way. It seems like, it seems like you're hearing about it all the time. Um, you're not trying to, to magnify someone's sin, but you are, talk, you are trying to point out this person is not worthy. And I wish we could change the laws to control fools in, in the way that I alluded to, but have good judgment when interacting with a fool. Uh, don't act like them. Don't lower yourself to respond in kind, but respond kindly. That's Heavenly Father, we pray uh, that you would uh, take these thoughts. And Lord, we ask you that uh, you would Give us wisdom in interacting with those who might meet this definition. And moreover, help us not to be foolish in the things that we say or in the way that we act. We all have things that we wish we had done better. But we ask God that you might help us to foresee the foolish conduct, foresee the foolish statements, and uh, before, before they proceed out of our mouths or before they come out in, in our actions. And we ask God that you might minister in and through this word given from you this evening. In Jesus' name.